हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू ट्यूटोरियल नंबर 59 इन अ सीरीज ऑफ वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल्स फॉर जावा प्रोग्रामिंग डोंट फॉरगेट टू क्लिक ऑन द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकॉन एज वेल टू स्टे अप टू डेट विद एवरी ट्यूटोरियल आई अपलोड ऑन माय चैनल इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी आर गोइंग टू जस्ट कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेयर वी लेफ्ट इन द प्रीवियस ट्यूटोरियल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द स्प्लिट मेथड एंड आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द स्ट्रिंग बफर क्लास इन द विच इज डिफाइंड इन द जावा डॉट लैंग पैकेज then after that all the methods you know which are defined after uh, string buffer they are defined inside this particular class okay like if i talk about this length capacity and share capacity all these methods they are defined inside this particular class string buffer all right so let's get started right away without wasting any time first of all we are going to talk about this split method now this split method you know what this particular method is going to do is it is going to you know intake or it is going to take a string as an input and it is going to decompose it into uh, array of strings all right so if it does not uh, you know uh, if it is not clear enough right now let us uh, you know uh, let me try to explain it with the help of an example so first of all you know i am uh, creating a string you know with the value as hello world now i am going to use the split method and i am going to you know split it into you know uh, i am going to decompose this particular st uh, string into a array of strings and the first uh, you know index element is going to be hello and the second index element is going to be world okay so you know uh, let us get started right away now you need to remember that this particular return type of this method is going to be you know array of string that is why i'm creating array of string here okay string array of string okay e r r it is equal to yes dot split then after this i am giving a you know uh, space in between now here you can see that there is a space in between hello and world and here also i am giving space in between space in between so now what this method particular method it is going to do is it is going to you know store uh, hello and world okay that means the first element of this particular arr it is going to be hello and the second element of this uh, array okay the the string which is stored in the second index it is going to be world now i am going to you know use a for loop in order to you know show you how the output is going to be so we can use either a for loop or we can use an enhanced for loop But here i am using a normal for loop for int i equals 0 i less than arr dot length i plus plus i hope uh, you remember how the for loops are you know used and created i have already created a tutorial you know uh, earlier on for loops and all i think it was in tutorial 20 or tutorial 30 some somewhere uh, around that so you can uh, you know go and uh, watch that tutorial to get more insight that how the for loop is working in java now you know uh, this particular uh, array i want to you know display this particular array system dot out dot print ln err i all right so now when i you know press this uh, run button what is going to happen it is going to print hello it is going to print a world all right or there is another way to do this without uh, you know using the for loop Okay, there are a lot of ways to do the same things in Java. Yeah, R R zero. Yeah, R R zero. I think okay. Yeah, R R zero. And after this, system dot out dot print ln. Yeah, R R one. Now, what is going to be the output? Output is going to be hello, and this is this is going to print hello, and this is going to print world. okay and that is exactly what the output which is printed over there now one thing you know which you you know might come to your mind is what what uh, you know what is going to happen if i you know write anything apart from this uh, empty space in between like for example i am writing wo here now here as you can see there is wo present here okay so what do you think the output is going to be the first word is going to be hell and uh, i also want to you know know what the second word is going to be okay so let us see what the output exactly is because there is a space in between so i want to see what exactly the output is okay so the output is the first word is hell and the second word is uh, only w interesting to know indeed i think uh, you know it has omitted it because of this wo present here perhaps 
okay if i write something like e here if i write something like e here then if i press the run button again then uh, what is going to be the output the output is going to be the space space is coming here please keep in mind okay there is a space here the so this particular space is coming and after this w e r l d okay so you know uh, so what have we learnt from this particular thing you know uh, this o it has been removed from that and uh, you know when i use uh, o here okay then what is going to happen is actually there it is going to print three outputs it is going to print three outputs okay so instead of doing this you know crazy work like uh, system dot out dot print ln error 0 error 1 error 2 and instead of using the for loop you know in one of my previous tutorials i already told you that you know you can print the array okay by using a predefined method which is already defined inside the java dot lang dot arrays package arrays class i mean arrays okay java dot util dot arrays java dot util dot arrays it's not java dot lang dot arrays sorry about that guys it is java dot util dot arrays arrays dot to string arrays dot to string arr so now if i press the run button then it is going to print hello it is not hello it is going to print hell then after this it is going to print w then after that it is going to print rld all right that is exactly what i wanted to tell you earlier because there is a o here okay it got emitted it got omitted then it is splitting it in you know around this particular uh, you know regular expression this o is a kind of regular expression and this o it will be omitted here so here o is there and it is omitted that o it is printing simply hell after that the space is coming then after that is printing w then after that it is printing rld now what is going to happen if i you know remove the space you know the if i remove the space then immediately the w will come immediately after the comma w will come immediately after the comma all right so that is how this particular uh, method is going to uh, work now that is all about the split method okay so you can use different delimiters here you can use yell also here if you want if you use yell then i think uh, you know it is going to work much differently i think because there are two yells here and there is one yell here so let us see what happens hachi then after that there is empty space here then after that o w o r then after that it is printing d okay so that is how this particular uh, you know method is going to work Uh, this particular method is going to work all right so why it is printing empty space here it is printing the empty space here because you know it is encountering two consecutive yells and the yell it cannot be part of the array right as i told you earlier itself here if you used wo okay it is not the wo is not included in the array all right so that is how this particular method is going to work now we have the string buffer uh, string buffer constructor okay we have this particular class now since this is the first time that you know we are discussing this particular uh, class i just want to you know explain a little bit here about this particular construct uh, with this particular class now first thing you need to remember is that you know the string class string which is defined in java.lang package you know i have told you a lot of times and i am saying it once again here that this particular class you know string it is immutable in nature okay it is immutable in nature okay so but however if i talk about the string buffer class then it is not immutable in nature okay it is a you know it is also you know a cl class which is defined in java dot lang package it is also going to provide you know the functionality which is provided in the by the strings and this particular string buffer class it is going to you know you know represent a growable and writable character sequence okay that means you know in this particular class you know it is possibly it is possible to have characters or substrings you know which can be inserted either in middle or it can be inserted at the end of the particular uh, string okay and uh, you know by using this particular class you know you can automatically make room for uh, you know extra characters or extra extra strings etc okay so now first of all you know let us talk about the constructor of this particular uh, uh, class 
so there are you know three constructors actually you know four constructors are there but uh, you know uh, uh, let us talk about them one by one all right so first of all i'm going to create object of string buffer string buffer st sb equals to new string buffer now as you know that this is a default constructor all right this is a default constructor now you know if i hover over this you know one thing is going to happen you know it is going to construct a string buffer with no characters in it okay it is going to construct a string buffer and you know the initial capacity is 16 characters now this particular thing and initial capacity of 16 characters this concept is very important to understand you know if when it comes to string buffer okay now here right now you know this string buffer it has no characters but it has allocated you know uh, capacity of 16 more characters okay now this particular concept it will become more clear to you later on you know when we talk about the capacity when we talk about the length okay and when we talk about the ensure capacity by default this is the you know uh, default constructor all right so now let us talk and uh, let us talk about the other constructor the next constructor is you know a parameterized constructor which accepts you know int okay like for example i am writing 5 here now what does this mean here i am entering the capacity okay so the initial capacity of this particular buffer it is going to be 5 all right then another another uh, you know uh, constructor is there which is going to accept a string all right like for example here i am writing hello world now this particular thing you know hello world it is going to this particular constructor it is going to accept a string and it is going to you know create a string buffer based on this particular string so this is another uh, constructor now if i hover over this you know you need to understand this guys if i hover over this it is going to construct a string buffer okay which is initialized to the constant uh, contents of the string which is specified in the parameter and the initial capacity is 16 plus the length of the string the argument okay so i will explain this into more detail when we discuss about the capacity all right so these are the three constructors and the fourth uh, you know constructor is you know it is going to accept a character sequence okay it is going to accept a character sequence so let us say something like this character sequence uh, cs it is equals to something like this like i am writing hello world here okay and here i can write cs so this is the fourth constructor which is accepting a character sequence but as i told you earlier you know character sequence it is a interface which is defined in the java.lang package and you know this particular interface it is you know implemented by the string class so you know there is no need to you know use this particular constructor in my opinion in my opinion you know you can uh, you know we will discuss only the three constructors one is the default constructor one is the you know constructor which accepts the int and another one is the constructor which is going to accept a string all right so let's get started with it right away let us uh, you know talk about the default constructor now now you know has you know i uh, hovered over this particular constructor you know a few minutes ago you know it told that you know there is no character in it and the initial capacity is 16 characters okay so let us start let us uh, you know call this particular method length length system dot out dot print ln okay system dot out dot print ln sb dot length all right now this particular method sb dot length what it is going to do it is going to return the length of this particular uh, string buffer so what do you think the length of this string buffer is going to be it has no characters in it right so the length is obviously going to be zero okay now if i talk about the capacity okay if i talk about the capacity what is the capacity of the string buffer the answer you know it uh, it has been answered you know a few minutes ago itself if you have listened to it carefully you will already know the answer the answer is 16 okay so the answer is 16 the capacity of this particular string buffer is going to be 16 okay it is going to return the current capacity that is the number of characters that can be stored inside it okay this is the capacity capacity means you know it can hold uh, 16 characters inside it all right 
then after that you know uh, before going to you know uh, talk about this other uh, methods and all you know what i'm going to do i'm going to you know uh, discuss all the three uh, constructors and i'm going to talk about the length and capacity all right so first of all let us talk about five new string buffer five so you know um, i think by default the capacity is going to be five only because uh, or it is going to be 21 let us see let us see what exactly the output is the output is obviously 5 only okay so the initial capacity is going to be 5 but however you know there is one interesting concept here okay there is an interesting concept here like uh, you know if I insert some value somewhere here okay and if the capacity uh, if the length of that particular string buffer it exceeds 5 then automatically it is going to allocate you know 16 more character spaces okay so we look into that all those things later on and if I you know uh, call this sp.length method I think the output is going to be 0 here as well because we are not allocated any value here it is going to be 0 only alright now now after this uh, you know we have the hello world after this we have the hello world now one thing you need to keep in, keep in mind is that you know the length of this particular thing is length of this particular string is 11 okay hello has five characters here world has five characters here and there is a space in between o and w so the you know the length is going to be 11 all right the length is going to be 11 now you know what is going to be the capacity of this particular string buffer okay the answer has been answered once again the answer has been answered a few minutes ago itself the answer is going to be answer is going to be 11 plus you know 16 more characters the answer is going to be 27 11 plus 16 equals 27 right so the answer is going to be 27 now you know that we have discussed about the length method we have discussed about the capacity method I am going to discuss about the ensure capacity alright now I am going to remove this capacity and I am going to write ensure capacity so I am going to write uh, you know uh, let us say 20 let us say 30 uh, wait a minute uh, wait a minute uh, I should not uh, you know pr uh, use system dot out dot print ln because uh, you know this particular method ensure capacity uh, the return type of this method is void type yes sp dot ensure capacity is the let us say 30 and after this system dot out dot print ln you know I want to see whether this method is worked out or not so I want to uh, do I want to print sp dot capacity so when I print sp dot capacity the output is going to be 30 because here you know I have forced the you know the com compiler to it is not going to be 30 actually it is going to be 56 okay so it is very interesting to know that the output the output is going to be 56 uh, it is going to be 56 okay so let us see how exactly the 56 is coming into the picture okay here uh, you know if you hover over ensure capacity it ensures that the capacity is at least equal to the specified minimum okay and if the current capacity is less than it then a new internal array is allocated with greater capacity okay so you know uh, the you know this particular thing uh, you know I have to explain in more detail later on so right now you know uh, this particular ensure capacity it is going to ensure that the capacity of the string buffer is minimum uh, 30 all right so it is minimum 30 that is what it is going to ensure then after that we have 11 characters here okay we have 11 characters here so 30 plus 11 should be 41 then after that if we add 16 then the answer should be 57 but the answer is coming as 56 here so I will look into it and I will uh, you know tell it later on then after this we have the set length uh, method set length method okay so sp dot set length let us say I am writing 100 and here if I uh, change capacity to length then if I press the run button what is going to be the output so the output is going to be 100 only okay here you know there is no change uh, you know uh, because of uh, because of setting the length okay but if I use ensure capacity then the you know it is printing 16 more characters there actually it is printing 26 more characters 
okay but however if i use uh, set length then it is printing exactly 100 all right then after this if you want to you know print the character at let us say i want to get the character at the fourth position so what is going to be the character at fourth position 0 1 2 3 4 it is going to be wo it is going to be wo okay so it is going to print the fourth character and it is going to be wo remember the index always starts from zero i cannot stress that enough okay so the first uh, first index i mean the index zero is going to be h and index four is going to be zero oh not zero oh sorry then after that if i want to change uh, you know a character at a particular index let us say i want to change the character at a particular index at carat okay then let us say i want to change uh, uh, the index at the fifth position fifth position is the empty space okay so i want to change the index at five to let us say uh, let us say a then what is going to happen wait a minute wait a minute i made a mistake there first of all you know this method it is going to return a void value so you cannot do that okay and the second thing is going to be sb so i am going to see, you know print print out the string buffer so now let us see what the output is yeah here you can see hello year world that means the you know empty space it has been replaced with ea all right so then after that this is the last method i'm going to talk about in this particular tutorial okay we'll be discussing the remaining methods in the next tutorial and mostly you know we will be completing this uh, chapter string in the next tutorial so then uh, let us talk about this append method now this append method what this append method is going to do like for example here i have hello all right and i want to append world to this particular string buffer so sp dot append world then system dot out dot print ln sb so now if i press the uh, run button is it going to work let us see what happens if i do this so if i press the run button yes it is going to work now one thing you need to keep in mind guys you know i cannot i am repeating it once again even though the string method even though the string class i mean even though the class string it is immutable in nature the string buffer class it is mutable in nature okay that is the reason why you know i am able to use this sp dot append and you know when i print sp you know automatically this world it is getting appended here okay so this particular method it is going to append means you know i already told you append means it is kind of concatenation only append means you know this world it is getting inserted after hello okay then similarly let us say i write here uh, you know i can write append here once again now th this is another interesting concept you know which is uh, you know good to know the return type of this append method is going to be string buffer okay so you can do this kind of chaining here okay since the return type of this method is also string buffer you can call the append method once again you can call append method you know 1000 times here if you want okay it all depends on your need okay but you need to keep in mind that you know this particular method it is going to accept a parameter all right so let us say you know i am writing here hello hello uh, everyone okay welcome to java tutorial now if i press the run button what is going to happen now since this particular string buffer it is a mutable it is not immutable it is mutable i am saying okay it is going to print hello everyone welcome to java tutorial all right so that is how this particular uh, you know see how easy it is you know in if i uh, need to do the same thing in uh, string it would have been very difficult i need to use a concat method and once again i need to you know do this like uh, for example if i use the same thing in a uh, string what i need to do i need to do something like this s equals hello okay then after that i need to use s equals to s dot concat okay i need to use this particular s equals 
which is this is mandatory if I use you know string s okay but this thing is not mandatory here because this particular um, class string buffer it is mutable in nature and because of this reason I can simply use this sb dot append everyone dot append welcome to java tutorial and this append it is you know it is possible to call this uh, method once again because the return type of this append it is once again string buffer only okay so that is the reason why you can do this so you know that's all i'm going to talk about in this particular tutorial in the next tutorial i'm going to talk about get cares insert reverse delete delete care add replace and substring all right so that's all i'm going to talk about in this uh, particular tutorial if you liked this particular tutorial then don't forget to like share and subscribe and uh, if you have any kind of doubt or any kind of questions then don't forget to post in the comment section below and yeah i will see you in the next tutorial till then bye